Hello, podcast listeners. First up, thank you so much for listening to and supporting the podcast. We really, really appreciate it. We love doing it and we love getting the amazing comments in from all of you. Just a quick reminder that the Your Success book is out now on Amazon.co.uk and Amazon.com. It's currently available in both paperback and Kindle and the audio book will be coming out in 2019. Head to tiny.cc forward slash your book to check it out. That's T-I-N-Y dot C-C forward slash your book to check it out. Now on with the podcast. Welcome to Your Success Podcast. We give you actionable insights and stories behind real life success wherever you go. Here are your hosts, Angelos and Mo. Your Success Podcast is proudly sponsored by Your Tax Partners, specialists in helping business owners and property investors to understand the wide range of tax issues that impact on their income, gains and overall wealth. Now, let's get into the show. We have a very special podcast today because we are doing a three-part special, not one, not two, but three-part special with none other than Angelos and Mo, my lovely friends. We're going to be talking about the three Ps. First of all, podcasting. Secondly, publishing. And finally, property. So thank you very much, guys, for coming here all the way from Camden and Plymouth, yeah. <laughs> not Portsmouth, <laughs> for another session with me in the studio. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Nicole, for thank having you. us. Yeah, thank you for having us again. Yeah. And this is going to be a little bit different because it's not so much me interviewing, but more of a general discussion between the three of us. Yeah. So uh, podcasting is huge and the guys have got a really successful <laughs> uh, podcast called... Your Success Podcast. <laughs> yeah, see what you did there. So um, we thought we would just discuss that a little, in a little bit more detail and, and give you some more information about podcasts, podcasting, and uh, so um, and our take on on how it's been. So yeah, guys, how did you get started started in podcasting? I think for me it was because it's a great way of just getting out there and reaching new people, having a great discussion about a variety of topics. Um, the legend goes, um, it's now infamous really, along yeah. with you know, the Bible and all these other great <laughs> stories about how Mo and I started work together on the podcast. So um, I, I wanted to do it because I wanted to reach new people and just share ideas, have a great banter, meet great guests like you and others. And Mo contacted me whilst I was on honeymoon on the beach and I wanted to create this podcast and Mo also wanted to create a podcast. And so it was a really great timing between the two of us. And I mean, what was your reason for wanting to start it, Mo? Um, I've been following a lot of um, a lot of podcasts like Tim Ferriss and um, Gary Vaynerchuk and, and those kind of guys, and it seemed like a really good way, like you say, to, to sort of reach a lot of people and talk about what you're doing, and there's a bit of a brand building piece as well. Um, so yeah, that's sort of where it where it originated from. I got in contact with you, and the, the first idea was actually to sort of supplement Anglos's um, events business. So it was actually called Pig Pods, and we, we thought we were going to do a lot about property and business and stuff like that. Um, and then that would support the networking event and vice versa. Um, and we, we did a few along those lines and then it sort of evolved, didn't it, as we got... Yeah, it's evolved it into this business, success, celebrating success, learning from the great successful people. Um, and off the back of that, it spawned a number one best-selling book, which we never dreamt of even putting yeah. anything together if, when we first put the idea of the podcast together. And it's just evolved because we collected all these nuggets of wisdom from all the hundreds of people we've talked to, plus our own experiences, and we put that all into a book, which yeah. was really great. I mean, it's a great experience to write a book. Um, but if it wasn't for the podcast, that wouldn't have happened. So, yeah, really great. And I think I think it's evolved. We'll talk about the book when we talk about publishing. But the... Um, the podcast sort of evolved quite a lot, hasn't it? It's been through a few like iterations. It started off as Pig Pods, and then it was rebranded as Your Success. And then um, I think what you want to get out of it, and what the people you meet, and things like that, change as you do it. So you don't necessarily. I don't think we ever thought it would be what it is now when we started it, right? And no. it was only October last year. Yeah, yeah. So it has yeah, evolved, and I feel that it's a much stronger podcast now. We we know what we want. If you know what we had an idea when we started, and then it just evolved. Um, one of the 
uh, quite a few people come up to me and ask, you know, how did you start your podcast? What was the reason for it, etc.? So how do I do it? If you know what I mean, that's their question. Um, and the advice I give every time is just because you've done a course on it or you've heard it's a good idea doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing for you. You have to have something you want to share, something you want to say. Um, if you ask the general public, what do you want me to say? That's probably the wrong reason for doing a podcast. But if you want to connect with people, interview great people, be inspired and inspire others, and you have a central core message and values that you want to share with the world or you have an expertise that really the world needs then absolutely start a podcast because it, it's just a great experience and, and i think the reason you need all of that is because it's quite hard work it can be quite hard work so like the scheduling guests or um planning in time to do our own interviews the cost of it isn't insignificant when you get started you need to buy the kit and things like that it's not loads but there is a cost to it but probably more the time impacts if you're not if you've not got a really clear reason why you're doing it and objective of what you want to get out of it and what you want to share, I think you just you'd probably quit after. Yeah, because the the shiny penny syndrome will mm. probably roll off after. When you, a couple when of you have when you have ten listeners on the first episode, <laughs> all of which like were you on different devices, <laughs> or your mum, um, or your mum, <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, it can be a, a bit disheartening. But um, yeah, it starts starts to build up, and then um, you start to feel better. But even when it, even when your listenership sort of plateaus, it's then it's that those, those points that you need to be like, okay, what are we going to do? You know, we need to mix. How up do the we take it or, to the next level? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, like I've got kind of podcast envy of you guys because you did things the right way, where you you had these set of questions that you asked everyone, which means that when you went to write your book mm. and when the idea, you had these really good questions that you could just draw upon to formulate a book. It's mm. the perfect template. And the, the only other podcast I'd ever listened to was Inside Property Investing with um, my lovely friends Mike and Vanessa Stenhouse. But back then it was just with Mike. And he had a very formulaic approach where he had, a set, he had set questions that he asked his interviewees and would then move on to the next question. And so for him, I keep saying to him, and we can discuss this in book, yeah. that is the perfect template. Mm. Whereas for me, the reason I started the podcast is I'd only ever heard mics before. And I just found that as my reach grew, more and more people wanted to talk to me and were would allow me to talk to them. And I was having these really interesting conversations. And I thought, I want to share yeah. these conversations mm. with people because they're fascinating. And it doesn't matter who they are. So last week I interviewed a Pilates instructor and I was interviewing another friend who was talking about um, fetish clubs and things. So <laughs> it's evolved as well from were just property people. Were you here last people. week? Yeah, I was actually. <laughs> right, okay. yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah, we were talking about <laughs> your gimp masks. But um, anyway, we... I, I I love the fact that we can talk and have these fantastic conversations with people that we can then share with others who are interested in the in the subjects that we're we're taking on. What amazes me is that we have listeners all around the world and it's like what why the hell do people mm. in California and Peru and South America and all these amazing places want to listen to us? And we get feedback yeah. sometimes from various people from different countries and it's just it's so encouraging to see that the fact that what you've said has helped inspire someone um we've had messages before where they've considered quitting their jobs based on what we talked about um just because there's other ways of making a living you know you don't sorry employee employers yeah yeah, 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 sorry yeah, about yeah, that. yeah. um but yeah it's, it's absolutely brilliant i mean we've gained so much from it yeah. we've been inspired by amazing guests that we've had our uh, mark Ormrod, um this triple amputee from afghanistan um ex royal marine and just you know, just to hear his story and, you know, when you've had a crap day and then you listen to what he's been through, it all puts it into mm -hmm. context, really. So he's really inspiring and it's just brilliant. It's, it's yep. built on network yeah, and yeah, we've yeah. helped others build their network. So it's really a win-win for everyone, really. It's, it's hard to say exactly, I think, what, the, what you know, the tangible benefits of it are. It, but we know that, you know, we've had investors that have contacted us because directly because of the podcast. Um, we've we've opened up doors to like new mentors and things like that all through the podcast. And we've got some great insight for ourselves. And also part of it, I think, is I don't know about you, but for me, it's like self um, almost like self mentoring. So mm -hmm. like we'll talk about something like we would we, we were just discussing overwhelm, like just generally the other day. And then we're like, well, let's do a podcast on that. And then we just discussed it and things like that. And it's. Um, it's therapeutic. Yeah, right? that's the word. Yeah, yeah, therapeutic. Yeah. yeah, it's quite. Do you find that, yeah, that you're talking absolutely. about things that are on your mind sometimes, and like the fetish yeah. and yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. my lycra and things like that. And someone was mentioning my great boots, of course, yeah. which uh, yeah. always get a mention. Very nice. they, they are striking. <laughs> they are striking. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Quite Not literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, enough of that topic. But no, I, exactly. I, I find that everyone who comes in, I have that goosebump moment with. 
Yeah. And I don't know if you find this as well, but there'll be a moment in the podcast, most of the time, where they'll say something and all of a sudden I get goosebumps mm. and I think, wow, that is the key nugget yeah. from this whole podcast. Mm, yeah. And that's what you can take away. And also you get to sit in front of amazing people, right? Yeah. You know, you, you wouldn't. You, you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can yeah, smell yeah. saying yeah. Nicole, but, <laughs> um, but you wouldn't necessarily have that um, opportunity, yeah. really, if you didn't have a platform. So it's a great platform for us. I mean, we have big ambitions for this year. Next year, we want to interview Warren Buffett and Oprah Winfrey, Richard Branson, all these amazing people. Yeah. And without the podcast and the book I and mean, everything else, it's, it's very difficult to get in front of them. But mm. we hope that we will be able to do that. And you're serious, aren't you? Yeah, 100% we're serious. Okay. Yeah. yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, there's no doubt in my mind we will do that. Um, but one thing I will say to people when they first start is don't expect um, loads of money and sponsorship and all this stuff. That takes a lot of time to start coming in the other way. And like Mo said, it, it does take quite a bit of money up front. And then you've got the ongoing costs as you carry on, especially if you want a pro professional sounding production. Yeah. Plus your social media and video editing, all this other stuff, it adds up. So if you're expecting to make a fast buck, it's probably not going to work for you. And you'll be very disappointed after a few months. I mean, it took us, what, nine months before we got sponsorship? Yeah. Yeah. Um, by your tax partner. Yeah. So, yeah, really pleased with that. But that's taken a lot of hard work. Can we talk some numbers? Do you mind opening up about some of the numbers? Or yeah, I'll yeah, ask yeah. questions, and if you don't want yeah. to answer yeah, yeah, them, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we can. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, we've got nothing to hide. Okay, yeah. so you've got sponsorship now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I don't. I haven't looked for sponsorship. Mm. I've, I've not really thought about it. But how many downloads a month or listens a month were you getting before you started about looking for sponsorship? It's only about 2,000, right? Yeah, yeah. About okay. two, yeah, 2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. But it's a very, I think the... The, the alignment with our sponsor that we've got, and it's not on every episode, it's only sort of, it's quite subtle, um, is more around like the local area and like the, the brand that we're bringing sort of a And their values are, are very aligned with what we do. So their ethos is to help businesses grow. They act as top level tax strategy mm. experts, as well as business consultants, which is very aligned with what your success is, trying to take people and push them to the next level and mm. achieve their best success. So this is why they recognize in us and we recognize in them a common set of values. And that's why we're really pleased to have them on board. Um, it's very easy to accept money from anyone. But if it um, it could be to the detriment of your brand. Mm. If I start, if we agree to say, take on, I don't know, who would you say, Mo? Well, we don't have to name names. Yeah. Like <laughs> let, let, some some someone dodgy brand, brand, let's yeah. say, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. They, they expect their pound of flesh mm. and you've got to deliver for them. Um, and actually, it's not it's not worth it then because no. you then spend loads of time trying to satisfy what their requirements are and you lose the actual focus of what you wanted the podcast to be in the first place. Whereas your tax partners are very good in that we just we do the episodes that we want to do. We'll put their um, branding on the on the ones that we think are most appropriate to their sort of business. Um, but we've got a complete creative control that's what but you it, call it yeah, but, also, reputation but also you yeah. have to you yeah. have to deliver for your sponsors mm. right um, and it's very difficult for a sponsor to measure yeah. just exactly what is the ROI coming from this podcast because someone may hear about them a few months ago and then go oh yeah your tax partners let's ring them up no one's measuring on the other end, you know, did they come yeah. from your There's succession? There's no like voucher code or referral yeah. link or whatever. So it's, yeah. It, it's, it can be quite difficult to measure the exact ROI, especially for tax guys, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, exactly. Well, numbers focused. Yeah, no, it's interesting. So how many, how many listens do you get a month now? Um, about, it's, I don't know, three, four thousand roughly. Yeah. Um, through Libsyn, um, which is our platform that we measure the podcast downloads. But we're getting more and more um, probably as many through Facebook views yeah. and YouTube videos and all this other stuff. So if you are considering starting a podcast, I, we strongly recommend mm. looking at the video side as well because they complement each other very well. That's right. And you get different audience. So I've, yeah. I'm getting around three, three and a half thousand downloads across Stitcher, SoundCloud. Yeah. SoundCloud's my main one, app or iTunes, podcasts, whatever it's called. So Stitcher is, do you say Stitcher? Is, Stitcher. So that's bigger than Apple Podcasts? Uh, Apple would be no SoundCloud's my Sorry, largest. Sorry, SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SoundCloud's, so SoundCloud's my largest because they host it on my website. Right. So okay. I tend to do, I, I direct all my traffic to right. my website mm -hmm. because that helps my website metrics. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That and makes sense. And then that goes to you can just press play on the website yeah. and it automatically plays. So that's why SoundCloud. SoundCloud well, is, is about two thousand. We do the opposite, don't we? Yeah. We, we tell people to go to different platforms because we want them to listen on their phone, in their car, wherever it is, as opposed to just going to our website. So that's quite interesting actually but you've got a different you've got other stuff on your website i guess that's not 
Ours is just yeah, podcast yeah. and book, right? Yeah. We, don't have, we don't have we don't have merchandise yet, yeah. do we? <laughs> well, no, I don't have merch yet. Yet it's coming, but um, no, I I'm going to I'm going to do both actually. Yeah. So yeah, going yeah. forward, I've got the newsletter that's coming that's just started at yeah. the end of last year. So every time we so at, mine's now a weekly as well. Mm. Yours is weekly. Yeah. So I'm now doing a weekly newsletter because I realised I was sitting on thousands yeah. of email addresses and not doing anything with mm. them so they now everyone who's getting my newsletter you now get my my podcast email every week and uh, that then directs people to the website but on the website you can see other places where you mm. can see, you can see stitcher yeah. and i iTunes and all the other places. What I, what I like, um, Tim Ferriss does um, Five Bullet Friday. I yes. quite like that. I'm That's doing that on Mondays yeah. now. Okay. As of the Monday coming, yeah. I'm going to have Monday motivation email, which will be the Tim and Ferriss And it's like model. it's like um, it's not say, it's not selling things, or there are links and things in that like that in there. But it's what he's found interesting in the week yes. and um, things he's been researching, health, different health mef- methods, and ways to make money and all different things like yeah. that. So no, I'll be really doing interesting. that every yeah. day. Well, Amazing. by the time this is out, I'll be doing that because I've been doing the Monday motivation mm. Facebook lives, which have been very yeah very popular me. yeah and i gave them up about six months ago yeah. but i'm picking them up again now once my kids have finished all their yeah. school but, but that's a good thing about a podcast right it funnels people into mm. other things yeah. that yes. your brand is offering or other services that you can offer yeah. so it's a very good way of attracting an audience that you're giving out for free um, yeah. and you're building that trust that rapport and then you can start guiding them to other services should they be interested and that's it exactly. isn't it it's the regular touch point so that people feel like you get it all the time i got it the first time at that grant cardone event i went to where people come up to you and say oh you're mo from your success podcast and i was like no way this is a stitch up wow. i was like someone's planted <laughs> literally two people in the set on the same day um but it's just that it's regular that's it they knew <laughs> it's just that regular, those regular touch points that make people, you know, the know me, like me, trust me, all that kind of stuff. I think that's really powerful as well. It's very um, powerful. Mm. And I, when I was talking to Mike Stenhouse about this, and he won't mind me giving him a plug because his, his podcast is yep. great. Yep. He's getting a regular 30,000 downloads a month from his. Wow. And uh, he, and obviously he, he makes, him and Victoria make money off mm. those now as well. But for him, he says the, the one of the key things for his podcast is to... Uh, yeah, attract the mentors, mm-hmm. attract people to come to their tours, attract yeah. people for their webinars and all these different things that they have. And that's their main mm-hmm. their main sponsorship is self sponsorship. Yeah, 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 to direct yeah, people into the yeah. other things. And then yeah. HMO investors as well. So yeah, they're very they're very powerful for that, for yeah. this touch point and this this trust. And did you know only twelve percent of the UK currently listen to podcasts? Whereas that figure is a lot greater in America. So I think if you do get into podcasting now, it's a good time to get into it because it's still a young emerging market in the UK. Yeah. So maybe in two, three, four, five years time, it's going to be quite noisy and crowded. You can start making your splash today um, before it, there is a yeah, lot Yeah, 100%. Noise. And also, I think, I feel like there's a lot of people that are starting podcasts. So you might look and you might be like, right, Ma, I've got an idea for a podcast that's about like Kung Fu or whatever it is. And you're like, oh, there's loads of Kung Fu podcasts. But actually, I think it's going to be a real test to see who stays the course. And Absolutely. there's so many now, but actually, let's see how many people are still going in and, a couple and of years. And con- consistency. We were talking yeah. about this last year, weren't we? If you suddenly stop for a month or, you know, you want to take a break, you'll lose your listeners because yeah. you're not consistent. You need to be planning ahead. Every week, every Monday morning, mm. our podcast is out. Um, and that's how you train your listeners. And that takes a big commitment. We were talking yeah. about that just before we mm. came on air. Is at the moment I've banked up maybe seven. No, it's more than that. I think we're about a dozen podcasts wow. for the next twelve weeks. Yeah. And you guys were saying you're running on empty. Yeah, right we're now, so like you're, got two, two left. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. But so, yeah. this is a big commitment. Whereas, whereas last year we were doing really well, weren't we? We yeah. were like three months ahead or something. Like yeah, we were we ahead. were crazy ahead. And I think because of the Christmas break and because mm. Mo and I have got so many other things going on, property wise um that's distracted us a little bit mm. but at the end of the day just sitting down with mo for half an hour every week it's it's not going to be the end of the world plus we're bringing our own experiences from difficulties that we've had to overcome so sharing that learning as we go along these journeys this year i think that's that's also quite yeah. a good thing as well what was quite interesting talking to mike about this and um mike i hope you don't mind me dropping your name into this i'll check with you before it goes out but you've been very as long successful as, long as long you put a link to his podcast I will. i'm sure he'll be fine uh, yeah, yeah mike and victoria i'll put a link to yeah. yours and i'll do a shout out on socials but um <laughs> What's really interesting is is they were saying that they went from weekly to fortnightly, yeah. and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's even less than that, but they still get consistently thirty thousand downloads wow, a month. So okay. it doesn't really matter so much about um, yeah how many times mm. they go. But the weekly certainly helped build up that momentum yep. initially. Yeah, and you guys influenced me to go weekly. Yeah, 
We when did we change that? We were we were monthly, weren't we? Well, we were fortnightly. We we're fortnightly, and yeah. then um, this we were like, right, clever we get, guy we... said to me, "I think we should go weekly." It's like Jesus Christ, Mo, are you sure that's a massive commitment? Us, and he said, "Yeah, let's crack on and let's do it." And we have done, and because uh, we, we found that we got the spike every time yeah, we yeah. launched, obviously because we did some promotion around, and there'd it, be a and lull, then, and we want yeah. more regular spikes to yeah. build up that momentum, yeah. and it has worked very well for us. Do you put yeah. any money behind it? In terms social of social media, spend, social media, but not a lot. Like what, hundred quid a month? Yeah, like, it's really not a lot yeah. of money compared to what we're spending in the property businesses. It's, it's nothing. But again, it's you've got to look at the return on it because it's very tangible in the property business to be like, right, I'm spending this on Facebook ads. I'm getting these SA bookings in, or we're selling these HMO rooms. But it's not as not as easy. Um, and one of the things, building brand. Mm. I mean, yes, okay, there is the Your Success brand and this Nicole Bremner brand. And I guess Mo and I have developed our own little unique brands as well, micro Mo's brand. Mo's got his own brand. Yeah, yeah Mo. <laughs> Face, Facebook page coming soon. Yeah, Mo's Instagram right. account. Mo's hair. L'Oreal, if you're listening. <laughs> Sponsorship. And... Any ladies' products have worked really well with your Ladies' products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're worth it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> very good. Get into it. But it's been great because, um, like I said earlier, we, we've got some big ambitions. And when you knock on the door and you say, oh, hello, Mr. Warren Buffett, it's Anglo Sanders here. I'd like to interview you. would be like, get out of here, you know. Um, but if you knock on the door and say, you have great podcast, number one best in the book, et cetera, et cetera, that opens up doors. Because when you, put, when you Google yourself, which I never do, um, <laughs> it's just what's the, what's the first page of results that come up? And it used, to, for me, it used to be this Turkish um, boxer. <laughs> Actually, I think he might have been a, like a cage fighter or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I saw that and I sent it to you, didn't yeah, I? I was yeah, like, yeah. is this another life, yeah. is it? Whereas now I think I'm hoping it's all uh, yeah, yeah, it's clean. all property and business and uh, podcast related. Um, I know. Is it, what's the guy of shooting stars called? Oh, <laughs> An- Angelos Fail Mifu or something like Have that. Have you seen it? No. The, do you remember shooting stars with Vic Reeves and Bob Mortar? You never no, seen it. Th- there's this like. I'm not, uh, how do I say it? Careful. <laughs> A special it, needs, maybe. Is that yeah, is that PC these days? I, I don't know. He's he's. He's yeah. He's, he's a comic guy. He yeah, plays a character yeah. who's got like special needs, and he's hilarious. He really is. And um, he carries around. He carries around like a carrier bag. Yeah, he carries like, full of crap, in, and he yeah. and he loves Ulrika Johnson, blonde Swedish girl. Absolutely loves her. We always come <laughs> back like to that. Just like you. <laughs> yeah, no wonder. But he's, I think he's called Ang Anglos Epith Epith That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, oh, hilarious. Okay. And whenever I used to tag you in Instagram, that used to be the first thing that came up. I just wanted to tag that. But yeah, now it's just what I'm doing, my website, and all the other. Yeah. Well, do you know what mine is? If you put in. Nicole Bremner, the first thing that comes up is net worth. Really? The second thing is age. <laughs> and the third thing Single. is husband. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm so afraid. It used to be age and then husband and then net worth, but now it's net wow. worth. It may even be husband and age is sort of interesting. So those are the most least, commonly searched things for you, is it? At least yeah. people are um, at least people are searching. They're curious. Like, no matter what they're searching. Yeah, about, they want to know there. whether you're single, wealthy, and how old I am? Yeah, how old you are. childbearing yeah. age still. So should we go through all three of those things now? <laughs> how long's we'll the podcast? Start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's get back to yep. numbers, but not net uh, <laughs> net worth. Um, how many husbands and uh, yeah, how old I am? So let's get back to numbers. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you guys are doing it weekly. You're putting yep. about a hundred pounds a month in. Yeah. Uh, you are. You've got a couple of podcasts in the bank, and you're getting around say three, four, five thousand, including all your social. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's roughly the same as mine as yeah. well because I'll get a couple thousand views on my Facebook lives, and then we'll get the sort of three, three and a half thousand a month on um, the the downloads. So. How much does it cost to set up to buy all your equipment? Because you and I do it very differently. So just to step back from that question. Yep. So I only do mine so far in the studio. No, so, so rock um, and roll, aren't you? Yeah, you're yeah, <laughs> darling. Yeah. And everyone comes to me, come to my studio. And uh, Alan... Shout uh, out to produce, Alan. Yes, shout out to Alan at One Louder Studios. He, he produces them all, edits them all. I don't know how to do any of that. You guys are completely different. Uh, yes. So, in, in answer to your question about equipment, we're, um, we're we're currently on phase two equipment, aren't we? Indeed. So, um, <laughs> when we started, we started with the. Sem- actually, I'll let you talk about the um, yeah, C1. Were, yeah, there's. Was it, is it Beringer or Senna? Beringer. Beringer. Beringer yeah, C1. C1s. So, they're like. Uh, like starter edition, shall we yeah, say? Like microphone. 60 quid or something yeah, each. Yeah. Um, very, very cheap and quick to go. Um, and we need, we had about three, four of them. And we had a little Zoom recorder. Yeah. And H4N. 
well remembered yeah, mate. yeah very good mate and all the cables and chargers and memory cards and pop filters all this kind of crap so a few hundred quid start probably no it's it about six seven hundred yeah, quid okay. all yeah. in all plus we had to buy this massive orange tank to transport it everywhere which is really heavy I remember that yeah who yes. does who yeah. can forget that yeah. bad boy it was a bit of a terrorist threat when we used to get the tube I was on the it? tube with this yeah. big orange tank of a suitcase it, yeah. it does make you wonder sometimes but just to be clear from the beginning we've never edited our own like we've always outsourced yeah. that so we've got an outsourcer so, who does we record them yeah we upload them onto our shared drive and then the team start work so they know when the release schedule is going to happen and what needs to be added to the description so the editor who's based in netherlands he's greek by the way very multicultural team um he edits all the episodes lightning quick gets it done for us then our video guy starts work and then we get it transcribed and then our social media person also works on that as well so yours are fully transcribed as well yep yeah and then we can repurpose that content and also we can pick out the video guy sees the highlighted quotes and then knows pulls which it. parts to exactly. edit yeah so then and, the, and, the, and the, just on that the transcribing obviously for the book has been was amazing because we were literally just like searching yeah, yeah. Could it, really, it just really made things really easy it. for yeah. us yeah um so yeah, it does cost a bit of money every month to have that team. So phase one equipment was like six, seven hundred quid. The ongoing costs probably, including social media spend and advertising, is like what, seven, eight hundred quid yeah. a month? Um, and then phase two equipment, so we sold phase one equipment, and then phase two was rather than having fixed mics with cables, we've gone to... Wireless, mic they, wireless mics. That we're, uh, are they Sennheiser ones? No, they are Roadlink. Ro yeah, yeah, Road, yeah. yeah. So wireless, uh, wireless lapel mics, um, and which which make a massive difference huge. to the the quality of sound, and also you, what we found is our our conversation style changed. Mm -hmm. So rather than everyone leaning forward like an interview, yeah. um, in the police station, for example, I've heard uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can just sit back on the sofa with your yeah. mic and you forget it's all there. So people feel a lot more comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. Confident, we, comfortable. Both of those, both. yeah, yeah. And we've had, I can actually think back now, like when we um, interviewed Mark Stokes at, at Brooklyn's, um, the Mercedes-Benz mm -hmm. World, um, we were in the lobby of a hotel and it was a, it was a really good interview, but because the, we were sort of in like chairs and the table was quite low. The table was really low, so everyone was, was really awkward. Like, like hunchback of not Whereas jump. if we did that now with the lapel, with the wireless lapel mics, it would just matter. be so yeah. easy. It would just be like very relaxed and sort of sitting back. Because like this is, even though we've got mics, it's very relaxed because we're just sort of and we know, we know Alan, the recording engineer, has got our back, so he can make us sound a lot better, right? Your soft voice. Your, can is bring it, your it up. Weak... <laughs> a few, a few I, I don't know why this has got to be raised again. <laughs> How many times have I got to hear about my weak voice? Um, I think you sound lovely. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. So Likewise. Phase two cost how much, equipment? Uh, it's about £1,500. Yeah, but we um, sold phase one for a few yeah, hundred, so... Yeah, so we, we made some money back on the equipment that originally we bought, and then phase two equipment, very well worth the investment because we can just put it all into a backpack. So we're much more mobile. Um, backpack over there. Less of a terrorist threat yeah. when we're on the tube. Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely, definitely worth the investment. But don't go rushing out to buy the best you can no. because you don't know where you're going to be in two, three, four, five, six months. We started relatively cheap, and then we just built and built from there on. Okay, so let's just oh. say that uh, people are keen, and a lot of people are, a lot of people right now are uh, starting their own podcasts. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys say is the, the first, say, three, five steps to going from no podcast to a podcast? What, what you want to talk about, why you want to talk about that. Um, how, right? How are you going to do it? What, um, yeah, why, a part of why is what do you want to get out of it? Um, who maybe yeah what in terms of do it, yeah, who, who do you do it with and who, who do you interview yeah who who is your target audience yes yeah, yeah. so like an avatar for mm. who you're who you're yeah. target yeah and whether you want to go solo whether you want to do it as a duet or round table discussion you know because I'm very fortunate to work with Mo because we just bounce ideas off each other all the time it's really good fun and sometimes it can be very time intensive and when you've got someone as cool as Mo and, and his beautiful hair um, it's you know, just energizes the whole discussion. Whereas, and also we bring two, two different points of view, which is a lot stronger when we interview our, our guests, as opposed to it just being me or, or Mo or whatever it is. You do work really well together. And I do like the way that you two bounce off each other. I've not found, I've, I've always done it on my own, so I don't have anyone to do that. But I do, again, I've got podcast MV. Let's just yeah. <laughs> you guys do work really well together. And I just want to come back to what you said right at the earlier in this is that you've got listeners from all over the world, but I get why you do. And we were talking earlier over lunch about 
I get really annoyed by some of the American podcasters mm. where everything's fuck, fuck, fuck. And like, like, I, ca- I cannot bear the word like used out of context. And for me, it's, it's a disease in America mm. that they must I've, be rid of. I've, I totally agree, but I have um, found myself saying it a lot more since I communicate, since I listen to the, those kind of guys. When we first started, Mo, every other word was like... And sorry, Mo, to have a go at you here, but <laughs> throw me under the bus. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Every other word was so like horrendous. and yeah. yeah, yeah. So w- just some top tips that we've both learned yeah. along the way, and yeah. you've just done it. <laughs> <laughs> when you're interviewing yes, someone, right. <laughs> you may agree with them, but do not vocalise it because it's really annoying when this, the other person says. This has been the hardest thing for me to do because, uh, like, like. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Talk. We got to start. My, my, I think my conversation style and the way I build rapport with people is by. Sh- showing and the fact that i'm actually listening so when they're talking i'm all i'm agreeing and i'm nodding and things like that when we we started doing the podcast it was a real issue because it it doesn't sound even though it's conversational it doesn't sound good to be going yeah yeah and then what yeah yeah Yeah. and yeah 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 yeah. and it's really annoying for the other person that's why you'll you'll see me sitting here and i'm going (laughs) yeah and and actually we 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 went through a period (laughs) we went through a period where we would brief the interviewee we'd say at the beginning we probably should still carry on doing that at the beginning and say we're not gonna say yeah and vocalize it but we nod in our head which might sound a bit look a bit weird but going on that mo actually that's a really good point so if you are looking to start interviewing your guests you need to build what is effectively rapid rapport Mm. um, because you maybe have five ten minutes before the interview just to warm them up but you're mucking around with equipment and it, it it can be a bit unorganized and you know the other guy's looking at you uncomfortable he's nervous perhaps in front of the mic his first time perhaps he's doing it so you need to just relax your interviewee um build up some rapport and maybe mention some of the little jokes that you have before the interview just so it's more natural more relaxed and you get the best out of them and that's really good advice yeah. because some of the the more challenging interviewees that i've had we don't warm up for 10 minutes. Mm. It really does take us a good 10 minutes into it. And then one I had recently, the interview, the first 11 minutes of the interview was shocking. And then the, the last sort of 40 minutes was brilliant. So I actually got Alan to chop the first 11 minutes off, put it at the back. <laughs> wow. At least I had that yeah. first bit that was really good. But that's a really valid point. People yeah. do take a while to warm up. We noticed it on, on quite a few before we really consciously thought about the rapid rapport building where... People were very tense, weren't they? And they're sort of leaning over the microphone, very tense. And then, like you say, five or ten minutes, shoulders would start to relax and they'd sort of sit up. And I think it's very easy to take it for granted when you're doing these regularly and you're doing Facebook Lives regularly and you're doing podcasts. You're like, well, this is easy. Like, who cares if you muck up or if you say, if you swear or if you do something, you know, something something wrong. But people that don't do the podcasts regularly and don't do Facebook Lives, actually, it's quite a big thing for them. So you do have to put them at ease. Uh, if you want to get a good interview out of it. Neither of you are saying anything now because you're so conscious that it's like saying, yeah. No, I, I really found I don't do it anyway. And oh, even okay. listening to... Miss, oh, yeah, I don't <laughs> do that. Sorry, <laughs> no, but bloody professionals, yeah. mate. No, but the laughing is something I do because I was listening to one of Tim Ferriss's uh, recently and he burst into laughter in one of his and it really, <laughs> really popped in your yeah. ear. It was, oh, I do that in mine. So I've got to be careful not to laugh. Yeah. Laugh on the inside. Yeah. It, it's difficult when it. you've got two hilarious well, guys in front of you, you know. It's, it's just true. It's not easy, is it? <laughs> Um, I think back to the just I'm just thinking back to the question about getting started and things like that. I think one of the things that we've done, um, we we did consciously, and one of the things that you do well is we haven't been too we haven't niched the podcast too much, and we're not too specific with it with it, which means we've got an excuse to basically talk to anyone because we're talking about success. Whereas if you if you just want to talk about a certain style of kung fu, yeah, 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 you, you really niche or, it down. Or property. When we started, yeah, and yeah. we were, you know, we were we were pig pods, and it was well, what does what's pig stand for? Okay, so it's property and it's investing and things like that. Um, so we then broadened it out, and I think a lot of probably trainers and people that talk about podcasts talk about niching because then you get much more of a dedicated audience. I think you have to balance it with what are your ambitions for the podcast, like yours, because it's just your name. You can, like you say, you've got an excuse to speak to anyone. So I think there's, think about niching to get a more... Um, dedicated. Dedicated audience versus the ambitions of who you want to speak yeah. to. And it's it's a it's a balance, really, because I've, I don't know what's right and wrong, really. I, I'm quite, to use the word again, envious of Mike and Victoria, how they've got this 
this set niche and they've got this really dedicated following, mm. whereas mine's more broad. So people, I guess, can choose to dip in and dip out. Yeah. I don't know what's but wrong. That's, with yeah, there's no right or wrong to it. It's just the way it is. Well, it? I think it's, I think it, 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 end, it ends up mirroring what they what they want to do in their life and what they're spending a lot of time doing. And if you're you're not just in property and you 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 don't want to be classed as someone who just does property, you do loads of other things. So your podcast reflects that. Whereas those guys are mostly property, even though there's different strands within property. They do the tours and the education and uh, mentoring and and as well as property investing. I think it ends up being the right thing anyway because it mirrors what you're actually what you talk about what who, the kind of people you hang out with they hang out with property people but also Mo, we do it because we enjoy it yeah most no, number one really yeah. is the reason we we do it is because we mm. really enjoy it you do it because you enjoy it nicole others may have other reasons more commercial reasons so they may want to niche down you can't necessarily niche down if you you know if you have yeah, these if, you're, if you're looking for if you're looking for leads that are solicitors then you do a very specific podcast about being a solicitor and the challenges you face and then you get leads into like your consulting business or whatever you're yeah. doing then that's a really good it's a good funnel but ours isn't i suppose it's not a direct funnel is it it's a bit broader yeah. but we're happy with that happy because with that. we we love it yeah so what are the plans then going forward well end of this year new book i'm not allowed yeah. to say what the title is <gasps> well okay Let's not say what the title is, but let's say what it's about. Okay, it's about helping people. If they have this burning desire within them to leave their job and start their own business or lifestyle, whatever it is, um, we are going to talk about the pros and cons of doing it. And if you are still determined to do it, because it's not an easy thing to do, um, then we are going to give you practical steps on how you eject yourself from your job and start looking at creating your own business, lifestyle, etc., etc. So it's, it's very recent for both of us, last sort of three or four years we've both jumped out of full-time work to, to do property full-time or, or other businesses and we've got a lot of people on our network and a lot of people that we've interviewed that have done the same so i think we've got some really good insight for people that want to do that not specifically into property just into whatever whatever they want to do but following their passion yeah and it'll be a good sister book to your success which yeah. is about you know realizing the best side of you um allowing your best success within a person's life to show whereas this is much more low level practical you know we'll give you the tools on how to do it and i think they'll complement each other very well that's yeah that's really exciting yeah. and so with your uh with your podcast are you changing the way that you interview people and the questions you ask in order to help with that book mm. uh, I think we're a little bit more relaxed now, really. Mm. We're less scripted because we've grown in confidence and we, we enjoy a bit more banter uh, with our guests. But I think we're just going to stay with how it's going for think, now, aren't we? I think the, the thing with success, when we did the success book, is you, you never think you're, you're a success, even though compared to some people and people tell you it's success and things like that. So we wanted to make sure that as well as our own experience, we then backed that up with other people who, would be, who could be objectively classed as successful. I think with this book... We're, you know, we've been there, done it, and you know, we're we're out of jobs and and um, happy with what we're doing. So we could probably do the book just between us. So we are going to back it up with some case studies and some people that are interviewing, but we're not changing our interview style or questions to say drive content into the book. We've already got a lot from the people we've interviewed. We can reach out to people like yourself and 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 do specific interviews or ask for specific tips and things. So um, no, I don't think we'll change it. We want to just keep going on the success sort of front. Um, and provided, basically, provided you're happy to be in the next book, Nicole. Of course, once because, again. Yeah, because we'll talk about yeah. that in our publishing <laughs> section next. Tune in to the next podcast on publishing. <laughs> but one, I've got one more question yep. before I answer my own questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, Angelos, you've recently become a father to a lovely little boy who genuinely is cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, how has how has becoming a father for the first time changed your outlook, if at all? I've, that's a good question, actually. I'll tell you exactly how it changed it, because um, when Fia, my wife, gave birth, um, it's a little, bit of a tricky birth, um, and they had to stay in hospital for a few days afterwards. And I was walking from the car park in the hospital, going back into the ward that they were in, and I genuinely felt like, pure happiness, which I haven't felt for, I can't even remember, genuinely like every nothing was going to ruin anything you know and that was all because of this little boy um that we created and it's amazing what two minutes worth of work nine months ago created <laughs> two you know minutes. yeah that's with the talking <laughs> <laughs> wow that's a long time <laughs> um but it was just absolutely just that feeling of it's not about you anymore it's not about anything else is about 
looking after him because he's de you know, defenseless. He needs you from a physical point of view, but also you've got a blank canvas there to help shape and help support whatever he wants to do. And I was thinking, well, what legacy can I leave this little human? Apart from time, wisdom, and all the other stuff that I'm going to give him, is you know what I'm working hard with my property business to give him property, for example, along the way to help support him, whatever he wants to do. Because I was thought to myself, what would we do in our lives differently if money was no object? You know, would we pursue that passion in physics or become, uh, I don't know, a doctor or whatever it may be if money was no object? And that's what I'd like to provide for him, but also teach him the value of money and to be, you know, to understand that you have to work hard and be ambitious and ambitious in life as well. It's an interesting, uh, it's quite a, a challenge really, because I feel the same way. I want the very best for my children. And yet I don't want them to be little mm. brats either. I, I really want them to be grounded and yet have everything. And it really is quite a conundrum, I think, to try and get that across. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I think I had never experienced true love. And like you say, with the happiness, I remember my son being born and just thinking, wow, this is love. And you just feel this complete unrequited love almost, or not unrequited because they, they do give back, but just this absolute complete selfless love towards this being that you've created. So yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. And it does, it does change your perspective. So um, yes, congratulations. Once Thank again. you very much. I love it, Nicole. And watch out for number two. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if you can have three in three years like I did. Yeah, yeah, that's very good advice. <laughs> Go crazy like yeah. I did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just to, to finish off by answering my own question that I asked you, I've just started the email for my podcast going out. I realized that I'm sitting on this massive email database that I'm not doing anything with that uh, might like to hear my podcast. So just started using that um, or utilizing that uh, email list. So it'll be interesting to see how that impacts my listening, my listener numbers. And I just want to, yeah, we're, we're doing weekly now. Mm -hmm. What do you want to, what do you want to achieve out of it? So, you know, obviously the power of it so far, but what, where, how do you want it to support you or what, what direction do you want it to take? In the next year yeah it's it's a good question it's something that i've spent a lot of time thinking about and i i really like the way that tim ferris is positioned mm -hmm. and i really admire what he's done he's he is a lifestyle experimentalist is, is i think the way he describes himself and there's there are a few parallels he's got his tv show he's got his podcast he's got his books he's got his investments and everything's sort of a hundred times bigger than what i've done but i've got my investments i've got my yeah. book i've got my podcast and i do a little bit on tv and i just really like the way that he is free to experiment on his lifestyle and i'm in a very fortunate position where i've got this incredible lifestyle and i'm free to to pick and choose and do the things mm -hmm. that i want to do and that really is where i'm taking it it's sort of just being inquisitive about the world and about life and being able to explore the various um, facets of life, whether it be health, wealth, wisdom, whatever it might be, yeah. and just continue to explore those. But really, I don't quite know, but I just, I want to keep doing what I'm doing because I love doing it. Yeah, I think it's nice. It's a nice way to, it's nice that you, sometimes if you don't have to do it for a specific purpose say like right well i need to earn this amount of money from it or whatever and it's more like yours comes across very much that you're just almost do partly is documenting what you're doing and the things that you like and the people that you like speaking to um which is actually it's quite nice and makes it very and easy it's to genuine to. yeah as opposed to right we've got certain kpis we've got to please the sponsor mm. you just do because you enjoy it and that's what comes across because i think your podcast is very good you've got a nice relaxing voice in the evenings i highly recommend listening to it <laughs> <laughs> okay it's getting a bit weird now <laughs> i'm just saying you're doing it for the right reasons as opposed to you know artificial um, and i guess you, do, you don't i don't know maybe you answer this but you don't feel any pressure that you have to hit certain numbers and maybe you might be hard on yourself for your download figures but you don't have to please anyone else through what you're doing no i sell nice. nothing i yeah. have no one to sponsor me mm. I, that might change if i get this incredible offer <laughs> but what are you what are you, what you looking out for clothes or uh, yeah clothes cars, cars or cars, cars, yeah. holidays okay. the maldives yeah um, all these sorts of nice. things yeah boats if there's a boat company i'd love a i'd love a catamaran i know someone <laughs> that we're, we're just happy for our uh, tax returns aren't we Mal? yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we still have to pay for those. 
<laughs> Actually, we know someone that works for, uh, in fact, a listener uh, mm-hmm. for the podcast and a reader of the book who works, who's a broker for Sunseeker. Yeah, Sunseeker. Maybe we'll put you in touch, yeah. see if they've got a... See if they want to sponsor. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we're looking to looking to upsize the yacht. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can do lots of pictures yeah. in bikinis from the mast. <laughs> so can we, by the way, if anyone is yeah. listening. Yeah. <laughs> in a unitard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've already got one, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I do. Less is more. Your um, Jerry Hallowell. It's oh like yeah, a leopard indeed. Print one, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Girl power. Well, on that note. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much I for think, joining me on this. I was, uh, sorry, I was just going to say, um, if anyone's got any questions on podcasting, obviously you are, but we're happy to um, to answer any questions or have a call about it. I know a lot of people are interested in it, so we can give you our honest uh, thoughts and, and things like that. And if Sunseeker wants any male models, we're more than welcome. Please get in touch. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, Sunseeker. <laughs> and uh, guys, yeah, as you said, happy to answer any questions. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, we will put... We'll, we'll put where you can get in touch with us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your Success Podcast is proudly sponsored by Your Tax Partners. If you're in business or an active property investor, talk to them to better understand your tax affairs and your options. If that's you, there is a special offer waiting for you at tiny.cc forward slash success pod. That's tiny.cc forward slash success pod. You have been listening to Your Success Podcast. Click subscribe for more incredible content. More details can be found at www.yoursuccesspodcast.com.